Hey everybody, it's the Drive to School podcast. The school year's right around the corner and we are thrilled to have Michelle Bauman, the director of Why for Life back with us. How's it going? It's going great. Thanks so much for having me back. And I am so excited to be talking to all of you guys out there heading back to school because what a big day, right? What a big month this is for high school and college students uh, in particular as they're heading back to school. Um, sometimes moving out of the house for the first time, there's lots of, lots of things going on. So um, thanks for joining us. Yeah, it's a busy time of year for sure. Um, mm-hmm. But it, it also comes with, you, you mentioned we're going to talk about worry and I just yeah. I can't think of a better time to do it. Um, so <laughs> worry, uh, I yeah. guess we really need an introduction to it, sadly. Um, yeah, unfortunately, we all, we all fall prey to worry, right? So we're all, we have moments in our lives where we worry. And sometimes those moments in the lives become big moments, right? Uh, they become re- repetitive or elongated um, because, because they don't seem to have an end goal, right? We might even say that some worry becomes anxiety, anxiety that is, that is more long-term, that's going to affect our lives uh, long-term. So we wanna look at that as a life issue today, um, not only because worry worry affects us on it, you know, just individually, um, but worry sometimes can, can um, cause us to make decisions that aren't going to support life, right? That aren't beneficial for us, uh, especially if we couch our worry or try to hide our worry in things that are unhealthy, you know, like um, not addressing uh, what we need to address for the worry, but also maybe trying to hide in medicines, right? Medications um, or alcohol or um, activities that (laughs) are not going to be um, life-affirming activities, right? Uh, Right. Self-harm, those other things. So sometimes worry becomes so engrossing that it becomes um, an an issue that we need, we need help with, right? Um, We need, we need um, medical help with. And so my hope today is that we can talk about worry um, and, and address it so that we can get that help before we need the medical help, right? Before we need um, to, to have other people intervene uh, in our lives. So, so yeah, so worry. Worry is ultimately a first commandment issue, right? <clears throat> it is not trusting in God as, as our savior. It's not leaning on him. And the truth is, um, we all experience it. It's not just a youth issue. Um, I confess, uh, I had some worry this last this last week. Um, I was going in for some surgery, and I was very concerned about it and worried about it for a couple of days. And uh, thanks be to God, I am married to someone who kept on reminding me of the truth that God is there to hold my burdens. Right. So Christ who um, took on the whole sin of the world, who carries that heavy burden, is also willing to take on the small burdens, right? The smaller burdens, like our worry, um, to to carry that on his shoulders and to to affirm um, that that we are not alone and uh, that he has everything in his control and that he is going to um, not only affirm, uh, but uphold our lives. So, so yeah, so first of all, we all experience it, right? Um, because we're sinful. But then how we address it, um, how we define it, how we um, respond to it is really important because there's kind of two ways. One, we can go the world route and we can depend on ourselves. Or, you know, we see that in like self-help books, right? Um, where we, we turn in on ourselves and say, Oh, what can I do? I've got to pull up my bootstraps and just keep on going, right? Uh, This is ridiculous. I shouldn't be worried about this or um, I'm going to do something to change it. And, and, you know, it's not bad to, um, to recognize that maybe some of our attitudes need to change, but a dead person can't change, uh, Mm. can't change his life. Right. And so I I say a dead person because that's what we are in our sins. Right. We are dead. Um, And so we really cannot by ourselves decide I'm just not going to worry anymore. There's that's impossible. 
right? So, um, at, yeah, it, it's uh, you're, you're weaving together something wonderful because we were dead in our sins, but you're going to keep going in Ephesians that we're we're made alive in Christ Jesus. I got a hunch. That's right. Um, yeah. <laughs> it, it really actually, though, it points something out to me about just what worry is that, um, so worry is, uh, somebody told me it, it's, it's your imagination used for evil. Um, it, it's that, that there are not all, not all creation gets to have an imagination. The idea to like, think about a thing that's not there. Like my right. dog, I need to actually show him, uh, the toy. Uh, he's, he's not just like thinking about it and, and wondering we've been given imagination that we would conceive of the promises of God, that, that we would, you said, have a first commandment issue that we would fear, love, and trust in him above all things. And so when we, as sinners struggle with the first commandment, we start to use our imagination as if God was not real or making good promises to us. We're returning to the death in sin with worry. Absolutely. So then the answer to that isn't try harder, is it? No, right. I mean, try harder just leads us right back to where we were, right? right? So what we need to do, you know, unfortunately, we, we, we hear messages in the world. Well, just, just internally uh, talk to yourself, um, have positive self-talk. Okay. Again, um, what needs to be said to us actually is what, what God says to us, right? So we have been made alive in Christ and God has so many powerful and wonderful messages for us that counter that worry, right? He reminds us that we are loved, uh, in, um, in Luke, which was the reading <clears throat> for, for, uh, this last Sunday, he reminds us that he not only cares for the birds and the lilies, right? But that he also cares for us. We are so much more important. And if he numbers their days, uh, he also uh, not only numbers our days, but cares for our days, um, that he has counted the number of hairs on our head, that he knows us intimately and he knows exactly what we need and that he will provide that for us, right? So even when we receive bad news, even when we're scared about who we're gonna sit with at lunch, God is already there in our future. God is already ready to provide for us the friend we need, right? Or, or the, um, the experience we need uh, to, to be a, affirmed. Um, and it, it's not, it, it's in little things and it's, in, and it's in big things, right? So when we're heading off to college and we're going to be living uh, away from home for the first time, God goes with us. He's already prepared that trip. Uh, with you, right? <laughs> to walk alongside you. Uh, if we're worried about about grades, or we're worried about professors that we've never met, or teachers, or will we be able to succeed? Um, whatever that future holds, God is already there, right? He doesn't promise that everything is going to go perfectly, but He does promise that that He will uphold us and that that He will make all things new. And what we need to hear then is God's word. So we, we don't repeat what we would say. We don't repeat uh, self-talk that is positive from ourselves. We repeat what God says to us, what, what God's word says to us. 